what you're saying is, yeah, quantitative easing is good if done. If I would have done it, I would have done it differently, right? Okay, so what's the difference between that statement you're making versus the socialists and the communists that say, yeah, I know everybody says communism doesn't work and socialist doesn't work, but if I would have done it, I would have done it differently. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Quantitative easing doesn't work. This system doesn't work what they're doing because, again, today – we're going to enter, I know, my prediction is, I've been in the financial sector for 21 years now. I got started the day before 9-11 with Morgan Stanley. I'm Sirius 7, 66, 31, 26, Life and Health. This has been my world for the last 21 years since I got out of the military. Okay, uh, am I a Ray Dalio? Of course not. Am I a, a, a economist? No. Am I the guy that went to MIT or any of the universities? Oxford? No, I don't have a four-year degree, nor do I have, do I have a two-year degree. I'm the regular guy that's concerned and asks questions, who works his ass off and has got big dreams and is curious. That's where I'm at. So I know my prediction, I may be wrong, shit's about to hit the fan. July 1st, it's officially going to be announced. My prediction is recession, okay? Q3, it'll be two quarters in a row, it'll be announced is recession. I yep. don't think they can do anything about it at this point. They'll announce recession July 7th, July 14th, but in the first week or second week of July, they're going to announce recession. Okay, so now they announce it. So the Powells of the world and the Janet Yellens of the world who are sitting here saying on October 29th when she did this interview with Wolf Blitzer, I don't know if you've seen this before, if you can just play the video, I just want people to see the 20 seconds of it. So she's supposed to be the person who's the former Fed chair. She's supposed to be the secretary of treasury. She's supposed to be the person that we all trust and she's brilliant and she's a genius and she's this. October 29th, Wolf Blitzer, rewind it a little bit and, and pause it so they can hear it. On October 29th, she says when she's asked about inflation, she downplays it. So watch this here for 30 seconds. And yesterday and she says, whoops, sorry. Tom, uh, go back again because Tom spoke so we missed it. Go back a little bit. Clearly, Madam Secretary, this inflation problem in the U.S. is not temporary, right? Well, I still would say it's temporary, although I don't oh mean God. just a matter of a month or two. Although monthly inflation rates are substantial, have substantially declined um, from where they were just four or five Thank months Madam ago. Secretary, to downplay this inflation this two days ago. risk, did that contribute to the problems we're all seeing right now? Well, um, look, I, I think I was wrong then about um, You're the who path we hired. inflation um, would take. As I mentioned, there have been You can pause this if people want to see this, you can see the rest. So, 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 okay, so we go into recession, say, first or second week of July. Then they're going to come out and they're going to say, oh, my God, you know, it's a show, recession. And then they're going to come out with numbers. And what we have to do is Powell's going to come out with Yellen and Biden and all these guys. Your quantitative easing is what we have to be. Make. So then we go and print another $3 trillion. For, it's not a big deal. No one's going to see it. So this keeps getting delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed because a guy like you whom i want to believe you know this is not going to work long term temporarily it could work but for us to prevent inflation i guess where i'm trying to get to is if we leave it alone and we don't do any quantitative easing there's going to be many guys like you that are going to say do quantitative easing but I, i'm not saying that but, i'm not saying but, but, one should do quantitative in fact i've said the opposite in, since May 2020, I've been warning, they are creating inflation, they need to stop. They are creating you, inflation, you they need to stop. You came up with this idea in 95, though. Yeah, but it's for different purposes. It's when you have a bust banking system after an asset bubble, and you've deflated and now bank but, credit but, but is you, shrinking. You, in 2020, bank credit was growing already already in February, uh, January, February, by 6%. You don't need this QE. The QE was the wrong policy, and I was very clear on that. Say we don't do QV. Say we don't do QV. Say we don't do any QV, okay? Uh, we naturally, let it said, you said a quote in your documentary that was, uh, there's not a country who's changed its social or economic system without a crisis. <laughs> this is in your documentary, which yes. I recommend everybody watching, right? Okay, Thank sounds you. good. Um, so, okay, I agree. I actually agree fully with that statement. But I also think that we've been extremely spoiled. It's like kids who all of a sudden get into a rich family and they've been in it for a while. They don't know what hard work is. They don't know what's going on. And then daddy or mommy loses all the money and they have to go through the pain. And you can't just band-aid, put a band-aid on it, right? You, kid, listen, son, we lost everything. Yes, you have to go get a job. You have to go make money. 
I no longer have that hundred thousand dollars that I'm paying you every year as a allowance. You no longer have that kind of uh, luxury that you've been living for the last fifteen years. But Dad, what are you talking about? You know, what am I gonna do? My girl's gonna leave me. She's going to leave you, bro. And you're gonna lose a lot of friends you party with. That you get all the tab at the bar. You're right. You're going to lose that car of yours that you go on a date with all the time that you look hot and you look good. You ain't going to be as cool as you've been the last 10 years. The coolness you've had the last 10 years has been fake, son. Son, you're actually not cool. You have to go earn the coolness is what you got to earn. America has millions of people that have been cool the last 10 years that should not be cool. They need to lose it. So for me, if we don't do nothing, they're going to propose another quantitative easing. They're going to propose it. If we do nothing... Okay, no quantitative easing. And we have to go through this without anything being put into the system from Federal Reserve, without anything being put in the system and bailing out the next bank that's going to be going down. What happens if we do nothing and how long will that last? Well, if already since 2020 they had done nothing, um, it would have been much better. Because what they created, and these were government decisions and central bank decisions, is they, on the one side, restricted the supply artificially, which was unnecessary, and at the same time, created money and gave it into people's hands. And they, the Federal Reserve forced the banks to increase credit by purchasing um, assets from the non-bank sector. So it puts a lot of money into people's hands. So you restrict supply, you increase demand, you create a lot of money, you will get inflation. That was very clear from May um, 2020 onwards. And I warned about this and I said, this is wrong. And unfortunately, we are still on that path. Um, and it could now move towards accelerating inflation. We have a period of um, stagflation that's being created artificially, and that's the key thing. That means, however, we can at any time end this and have proper policies. And the proper policies are when banks mainly and, and ideally only create credit for productive purposes, and that is when banks, small banks, lend to small businesses for business investment, increase productivity, implement new technologies. That should be increased and everything else should be reduced. If people want a mortgage, they should get it from a non-bank lender and banks should not be allowed to uh, to invest in that. So that's how you, you make sure only existing money is used for asset transactions. You, then you don't get asset inflation. Um, and you make sure small businesses have enough money by helping the small local community banks. America has a lot of those. They need to be supported by the central bank, not the big banks. Now, actually, we can compare now to to China, I think, which is an interesting example because they used to be, you know, essentially Stalinist type, Soviet Union type economy uh, in the 60s and then early 70s. Then in 1978, Deng, Xiao Ki- Deng Xiaoping came to power. And you know what he did? What was the biggest thing he did that created this success of the Chinese economy? He traveled to Japan. He went going to these... Um, evening, these dinners um, with the Japanese, drinking a lot of uh, sake and and motai. And he got the truth out of them about window guidance and that you can use this window guidance tool for good if you make sure banks, first of all, that there's a lot of banks, a lot of small banks, and the banks create credit mainly for business investment. And so when he came back and he rose to power after 1978, uh, in China, what he did is he created a lot of banks. He started with this Soviet system of one bank, Mono Bank, the central bank. But then he created thousands of banks, small banks, community banks, savings banks, regional banks, provincial banks, a few national champions as well. But now China has almost 5,000 banks, almost as many as the US. And that created these 40 years of double-digit economic growth, multiplying national income. So, And that is very capitalist, to have small local banks. That generates a capitalist economy. Why? Because, you see, the money supply creation process actually belongs to all of us. It's our privilege. And if a central institution is making these decisions, that's never good. It needs to be decentralized. And the best way is to have small local banks 
you can watch what they're doing. You can attend their meetings. You can ask. You can hold them to account. If they if they suddenly support a strange project, locals can influence them. Richard, because you just small. flipped though. You just flipped in twenty minutes. You just flipped because no. twenty minutes ago you said what they did was right because the money wasn't felt or seen in that situation where we already have the wrong system, which is so centralized. But I'm against the centralized system. That's I'm telling you. I we know agree because on that. I, I see you. Cool. You said this massive government intervention rather than the economy. Rather, the economist says that the more relevant comparison is what happened from March 2020 is much more akin to certain, uh, cer- uh, certainly uh, centrally planned Stalinist Soviet Union type restrictions. In uh, what uh, uh, scenarios? What we have is massive innovation by the government and the economy by introducing restriction, including price controls, on so many parts of the economy as we've never seen before in the UK. Right? We're seeing that also in the US. Well, exactly, and that's what I'm criticizing. I know you are, but 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 you also saying what they did. It, with 2008 was the right move. And you said if you would have done it differently, you would have done it slightly differently. But you're still supporting the central bank getting more powerful. Yeah, but you see, there's a sequence. They had created this acid bubble with their centralized bad system and bad policies. Once you have created this, it's like you're falling over your bike. Should I not help you so you don't crash? Yes, I'll help you quickly. And you're saying, oh, you shouldn't intervene and shouldn't help me. Well, look, I, I know you can quickly solve this problem. But the bigger story is we need to shift away from the central centralization that the central planners love that's not good and we need to decentralize and the best way to do this is establish local community banks yeah. new small banks then we get the centralized uh, the de- uh, the decentralized system and that's what made even china successful they moved from the soviet system 